Good evening, friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host inviting you through the squeaking door to give you a peek at the latest style in murder and mayhem. Yes, friends. The styles and crime change like anything else. You know, there's a new look to the corpses these days. Blood is running longer for the ladies. <laughs> Stranglers report that the new long hair do is ideal for uh, garroting girls with their own dresses. Only one girl ghost I know have complained about the long dresses. She says that she's been wearing long sheets for years, and now no one can tell her from a human that she can't haunt people anymore. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, The Doomed, was written by Milton Lewis and stars Carl Swanson, a role of Garth, with Mercedes McCambridge as Claudia. All right, Francis. You know what's going to happen now, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's right. You're going to scream your little head off and laugh. Ready? Then gather close to the fire and listen to Garth Walden tell us his strange story. I'm not sure if I icy sweat my whole being. So present is death. And I rushed to the window as if to escape and opened it wide. And with the breath of the cool night air on my face, my eyes cleared and I looked at Nina's bed. And I knew that she wasn't sleeping. I called. Nina! Nina, wake up! Didn't Nina! I was terrified. I knew there was a sight of sound usually vocal, and I shook her. Nina! Nina, talk to me. It's me, God! Nina! I did my thought. The bruise was on her neck. I knew I'd murdered her. Frantically, dialed her number. I go back there. Her eyes were closed. She was still, so still, so deathly still. Lyman. Yes, this is Lyman Simmons. Who's calling? I'm, I'm sorry to, to uh, wake you at an hour like this. Who is this? Uh, Garth Walton. Oh, what do you want, Garth? I'm in a, 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 a terrible jam. I, well, what's the matter? I murdered my wife. What? When? Just, no? Just you. I don't know what to do. I need help desperately. She's lying there on, on the bed. Now, get a grip on yourself. But, exactly as I tell you. Yes. Get a suitcase. Pack some clothes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. When you leave, lock the door. Make sure of that. Yes, I will. Then come directly to my place. Don't take a cab. Walk. It's only a short distance. Yes, I understand. Don't let anyone see your face if you pass them on the street. Make sure no one sees you come into my house. Yes, I'll be careful. Remember everything I told you. I, I appreciate what you're doing, Lyman. Goodbye. Goodbye, God. <laughs> Did anyone see you? No. No one. All right, sit here while I draw the blind. Huh? This is the ground floor apartment. Lyman. Just a moment, Doc. Did you get the bureau? Yes, yes. I, I took the bureau back. Put it on the desk. Yes. Now, what happened? Well, you, you know that I've been here. Yes. Well, Nina wanted me to go to her sanitarium. I guess that's why I hated her. I guess that's why I killed her. She wanted me locked away so that she could get up my money. She never loved me, and I'm not sorry that I killed her. Uh, I shut up. Someone made here. Oh, I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I killed her. I'm, I, I'm sorry, God. You're, you're losing your head. Fine. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll behave. But look, I mean, you've got to help me. I can't take care of this myself. Somebody's got to help me. You're not making it easy for anyone to help you. Go on. What happened? Well... Nina had me examined by a group of specialists to find out if I was insane. Well, and they said that I wasn't. Just a case of my, my nerves being shot. How did you murder her? I don't know. No. No. See, that's, that's one of the things that's wrong with me. I, I, I can't remember certain things. You don't remember killing her. No. But I, I must have murdered her. What makes you so sure? Well, because I, I was locked in the room with her. And I must have done it while I slept. Well, you slept. Well, they told me that I won't 
I could choke her while I was sleepwalking. I don't remember. I see. And when I walked tonight, I was having a kind of a nightmare. She was on the bed. Dead, and, and there were bruises on her throat. I know that I murdered her. Go on, girl. Well, I, then I, I phoned you. You 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 were my oldest and closest friend. You're you're the only one I could think of to turn to. You're a lawyer and you you know what to do. See you, you do know what to do, don't you, Lyman? You are going to help me. You're not going to let them put me to death for this, are you? God. Yeah. Two weeks ago you approached me about getting a divorce. Yes. That's that. You mentioned something about another woman. Yes, Claudia Weston. I want to marry her. Why? Can the police find out about that? Yeah. I suppose so. There are, are letters. Mm-hmm. That is what? Very. It gives you a motive for murder. When did the group of doctors examine you? Two days ago. Why? Why? A plea of insanity is about the only thing that can save you. And now with their findings that you're saying, that's out. Well, what am I going to do? Doc, aiding and abetting a criminal is a serious offense. I can go to prison for helping you. Are you backing out? I don't know. No, you can't. You're my friend. You realize you're asking me to commit a crime. For heaven's sake, Norman, what are you trying to do? Drive me out of my mind? I've gone through enough. See, you're there on the bed like that, and now you're going to let them take me? No, no, God. Here, I, I've got them for you. Here, take this. There's a gun. It's loaded. The serial number has been filed off. I took this away from a rather stupid client of mine. Well, what? What's the idea? You're a fugitive now. You might need it. Did you lock up the apartment as I told you to? Yes. The banks will be open in four hours. I want you to go to your bank and draw out all your ready cash and bring it here. Why? I'll need it to help you get out of the country. Is that what I've got to do? That's exactly what you've got to do. Now, when you leave here, check in at some hotel. Turn your collar up, don't you? Don't let anyone get a good look at your face. I understand. You won't be in any danger until after they've discovered Nina's body. Will anyone call at the apartment this morning? No, there won't be anyone there all day. I don't think. Nina decides the name yesterday. That's all to your advantage. As soon as you've got the money out of the bank, come here. Oh. Why not be seen? It won't be so easy at that hour, but we'll have to risk it. No, I am. Don't imagine I'm unaware of the risk that you're taking. You, you saved my life for me. But I would have done it even if I didn't owe you that favor. All right. You better move now. There wasn't a stove in the hall of the street I started in there. So far, I was hanging on my Then I heard it. A silence. I glanced over my shoulder with the police power car speeding down the block and it was coming from the street where I lived. They discovered the body. They were already looking for me. I ran. I ran as fast as I could and the power car was speeding up the street. Right in back of the house. I ran a few more steps to the subway entrance. I ran down the steps and I had a nickel ready. And I dashed through the fence. My luck still held because there was a waiting train and the doors closed just as I the car and the train pulled out the platform. Yes, that's right, Claudia. I, I was afraid to go to a hotel. The police might be looking there already. They couldn't get me when I tried to register. This is a hotel. I know, I know, Claudia. But I, I knew I could come right up to your room without going to the registration. Oh, God. I know, I know I couldn't have done it. You know what it's like. I the night be behind you any minute. I was so miserable, I had to see you, Claudia. Then you can take the call. That's my home. What are you doing for? If the police are there, they'll answer. 
there's nobody who's discovered the body. It is just room. Another thing, Doc. I think you made a mistake about Lyman. Mistake? Yes. Well, you don't know Lyman. He'd do anything for me. He's taking a, a big risk trying to help me. Maybe he's trying to get your money. How can you say that? Doc, darling, don't you see? He wants you to bring him everything you have. Well, what's to prevent him from keeping it? You'd never be able to do anything to him without risking capture. Claudia, if, if I can't believe in, in Lyman, Listen I just... to me. I know a way you can test him. But... Just a minute. Yes. Oh, thank you. There was no answer to a place, though. Then the police don't know. No, but Lyman died. Scott, you've got to find out about him. I risked going to the bank and blew out all my cash. I was still safe. And I went to Lyman's place and quickly let me in. Did you get the money? Yes. It's in a suitcase. Give it to me. Hurry. How much is it? Ten thousand dollars. I've already seen now about the jewelry. You gave me 8000 for them. Now, uh, did you find a place to stay? Yes. The Hotel Gainesville, room 690. All right. Wait there until you hear from me. Uh, if anyone tries to force their way in, you better use the gun I gave you. The gun? I haven't got a chance otherwise. You shoot your way out or be killed. Lyman, you, you better leave now. Yeah. Here's some of this money. What are you going to do with the rest of it? Save your skin, Doc. Goodbye. Goodbye. I couldn't believe what Claudia had told me, yet there was something in his manner that made me follow her advice. In leaving, I slipped the lock on the door, so it was easy for me to see Cassie with the pocket. I quietly opened and closed the door. I heard Lyman on the telephone. He was at his desk, talking very intensely. He didn't see me come up behind him. All right, I'll wait. Yes. What he said made me draw the gun out of my pocket. Yes? Yes, Inspector. Yes, Doc Walden phoned me. Only a few minutes ago. No, he told me he had murdered his wife. I believe it. The man's a homicidal maniac and he's armed with a gun. That's right. I pretended I was going to help him. He told me where he's hiding. It's room 690 at the hotel game Yes. Tell your men to be careful because he's desperate and will put up a fight. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye, Lyman. Stop! I heard every word. Did you? So you're my friend. Yes, you're, you're misunderstanding, Doc. This is, is part of a plan to help you. There's the same penalty for two murders as there is for one. Isn't that true, Lyman? Doc, put that gun down, please. My friend. Doc, you can't. No. Oh, oh, oh. He gathered the money together, put it back in the suitcase, and ran to the door. In the darkened hallway, I suddenly stood stock still when I heard. Hi! It was the voice of my wife. I turned, I saw her face. And with a shriek of terror, I ran into the street. I knew what had happened. It was an hallucination. My mind was trembling under the violent pressure of terror, bitterness, murder. <laughs> Garth Walden has just told us about two murders and his insanity. You know, that's the trouble with committing murder. It leads to lunacy, and lunacy leads to psychiatrists, and psychiatrists are so expensive. <laughs> well, let's hear Garth finish the story in his own words. A cab was waiting outside the house, and I jumped into it. I had the driver take me to Claudia's hotel. I went for a room. Told her everything that had happened. So you murdered him? Yes. You were right about him. Doc, you shouldn't have come directly to the hotel. I don't care anymore. So you didn't tell Lyman that you were with me? No, no. I lied to him. I said I was at the hotel game. It's just it, it, hallucination. Oh, no. I've I, I never had that before. I know it in my mind. Doc, you mustn't think about it. Yes. You've got to calm down. Right. No. Here, I've got something for you. 
What is it? Take it for me. Oh. What is it? It will make you sleep. Take it. Well, I don't. Is it there? My poor darling. Claudine, you can't imagine what I've been through. Oh, don't you do that. What's going to happen to me? Nothing, darling. Nothing. But the murder. No, I'll help you. Get out of the country. Be able to start all over again from here. I really believe that. It can be done. I'll help you. You better not. I told you what my mind said about me. It doesn't make any difference to me. You better try it. I wouldn't mind. It could help you. Okay, so after me, we both may be killed. Yes. Yes, you may. Doesn't that mean anything to you? No. If you die, you think I'd care if I was killed? Well, then. Close your eyes. Mm -hmm. You do love me, Father. I'll never forget that. Never. You've done more than any man to let that. Close your eyes. I closed my eyes. I could still feel my jangled nerves touching my body. Think? I don't know. But I slept. But I saw this. Was it in a dream? Nightmare? I saw Claudia open my suitcase, take out the money, wrap it in a neat package, and dress it. A little later, there was a knock on the door. The drag boy was in the middle of the corner. Just in front of the poster. You keep the key. How'd you go back? There was a dream. Had to be a dream. You should have to the telephone. Hello, operator. I want you to call the police at once. Yes, there's a man coming up to my room, and he's armed with a gun. He's a homicidal maniac. I like you. But listen, I can't believe it, not Claudia. They were coming towards me. She had a gun in her hand. Her lovely face was a spectacle of expression. It was a mask. Maybe I had to be. So I raised the gun from the coat of my head and I looked through my half-closed eyes. I saw a pair of safety cap. I could see the fingers caught. His shoes. And then I lined up. Oh, let go of my hand. Let go. Give me that gun. Oh, no. I give it to me. I got the gun now. Oh, you hurt my oh, arm. Oh, did I? What are you going to do? You sent for the police, didn't you? You heard that? Yes. It wasn't a dream. What do you say? Nothing that'll make any difference to you now, Now, Claudia. look, listen, Doc, you mustn't do anything foolish. Such as murdering you, Claudia? No, God. And why not? Don't. What difference can another murder possibly make now? God. What did you do with that money? I mailed it. To the downtown post office, general delivery under the name of Carol Crane. So that's why you're so helpful. To get my money. No! No. It was just a plan to help you. The gun next to my head. That was a plan to help me, too, I God! Thought. You'd go to jail for me, wouldn't you? You'd die for me, wouldn't you? You're worse than Lyman. Put down that gun! It was for you that I was going to divorce Nina. God! Oh. You. The lovely mask lay there on the floor with a queer, twisted smile. I hit the door. I ran to the window. I hung it up. There was a parrot on the floor below, and I jumped. I the room. I raced through there to the corridor, down endless stairs to the lobby. Just about to go into the street when I heard a voice call. I spun around. Nina, my wife, I saw her face again and I reached into the street. When I took town down enough, I remember the sort of little rooming house downtown. Nina and I had lived after we were married and had to count every penny. I was lucky enough to get a room. Then that night I heard a knock on the door. Who is it? Nina. Hello, Doc. Nina. Nina. Don't, Mr. Pando. I'm going to help you. You're, you're dead. No. No. Doc, you need. I know what happened. I, I didn't hear you. No, Doc. You were dead. I'm sorry. I was close to death. You saved my life. Huh? Remember, it was cold in the fireplace of the bedroom and we didn't open any window? I was unhelpful. You told me. You 
Well, now, if you wake up, I'll help you. Open the window. That's the truth. But the bruise is on your neck. Don't you remember? What? Earlier that night, you got up to your feet. You had one of those fits of violence. Oh. oh. Good. Oh, Nina, do you know what I've done? Oh, darling, I know what you've done. I tried to find you. I went to Lyme, and I... I even went to Claudia. Why'd you come here? To help you. Help me? You, you're not yourself, God. You haven't been for some time. I know you need help more than you've ever needed. Oh, Nina. I thought of this case. I didn't expect to find you. Darling, I have a little money. I borrowed it from my mother. Perhaps you can go from oh, here. Oh, Nina. Just wait on me, Where is it? Come on, quietly. We know you're in there. Oh, sorry, Mr. Walton. You haven't a chance. Well, you betrayed me, too. Oh, no, God, I didn't. Listen, I'll help you now. Oh, I haven't got a chance. I'll go to the chair for those two murders. You have a gun? Yes, sir. I've got the car outside. Now hold me in front of you. Use me as a shield. They won't dare fire and hit me. At least you'll have a fighting chance. Tina, you will do with this. Yes, sir. Open the door. Come on, Walton. Open You ready, God? All right. I'll try it. I'll open the door. Now stand in back of me. Ah, you t- Hey, what's the idea? Don't shoot, officer. I've got a gun. If you shoot, you'll hit her. Get out of the way now. We're coming through. You fool. You can't get away with we'll this. You'll about... Oh, my... Oh, my... God, don't mind me. Run for it. Oh, Nina. Mine's healing now. Nina's well enough to visit me here in the hospital. In two days, I'll have to appear in court to answer a charge of murder. The two people I killed were two people I loved and trusted. And they both betrayed me when I thought I was a murderer. The only person who loved me enough to risk a life for me was my wife. Yeah. <laughs> well, friends, isn't that just like a wife? Hmm. To come out of the grave and be sweet to you just before you go to the electric chair. <laughs> Poor God. Well, he would have known better if he'd only read the inscription on the tomb of Slice Him Alive, the Arabian Bluebeard, which says, Never murder a wife who won't stay dead. <laughs> and here's a little thought to take to sleep with you. Never commit a murder to become wealthy, because being rich is so expensive <laughs> This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Thank <laughs> you.